What's going on, good people? Rich here. School in the building. It's your girl, Ray P, on the mic. What's going on, fellas? What's happening? Slow motion. You already know. We back at it again with another episode of the Culture Garden Podcast. Definitely appreciate you as always for tuning in with us, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, yeah, Google Play, whatever you do. You know, we appreciate y'all so much. Um, please remember to subscribe, to share. If anybody loves television, movies as much as you do, please make sure that you share this podcast um, so we can build a community even more, have these conversations. Sure. Um, I always say it, we have our link tree. Um, that's very important. I'm going to make sure I put it in the actual description. Uh, I've been doing that, but I want to make sure y'all have it. You follow us on Instagram, the Culture Garden Podcast. You will see that link tree in our bio. Just gives you access to all our links because we have the We Got Y'all television feed, um, which we have uh, Harlem actually coming up. I think we're actually be dropping an episode here real soon in the next couple of days. Yeah. We can have see season one because season two is coming out this weekend. Um, so we'll have some ep- an episode of that for you on Monday, Tuesday, as well as part 14 of your honor. So um, a lot of things that we're discussing here. And it is February. Uh, we're recording on February 1st. It is going to be officially February 2nd when this episode releases. Um, so we decided it's going to be Romance Month. Mm-hmm. Um, so this entire month, we're going to have romance, rom-com, romance films. Yeah. Um, we decided as a group on the first one, which you're tuning into it right now, Brown Sugar. And the other three weeks, um, each one of us is going to pick a film um, that we're going to break down. So, And don't think that we didn't forget that February is also Black History Month. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> absolutely. So we can fuck it with some black love tonight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Black History Month. Make sure y'all celebrate. Y'all should celebrate us every day anyway. But, um, you know, take part. Take part for sure. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. When we when when y'all suggested it last week, um, you know, I, I wanted to tuck it away a little bit because it's just one of those ones. Mm-hmm. Um, it is it's not necessarily a grail. Um, I have about five or six grails. It's not there, but it's the level below what a grail is for me. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite rom coms of all time. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll have to do a list of like best rom coms ever. Uh, but it's it's up there. It's up there for me. I really do enjoy this. I love brown sugar. Um, I think I always forget how much I love brown sugar until I start watching it. Like, oh, I love this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, love this movie. I, 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 I agree 110%. Every time I watch this movie, I forget. Like, damn, this movie is, is it. It's good. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's coming off of the whole best man trilogy miniseries but i really like tay diggs Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes i i don't want to say sometimes it didn't curl all the way over but i really really like tay diggs listen if you were if you were around during this run um, there was a moment of time where Tay Diggs didn't curl all the way over. Yeah, and I don't really remember why, but there was just a moment in time. Yeah, you had to if you weren't there, you missed it. Yeah, um, but I think that's done a one eighty, and he's everybody loves Tay Diggs. Like Absolutely. you know what I mean? Like he really. Um, I'm gonna say I, I don't know if y'all have a TikTok, but if you do, this is for whoever for the subscribers as well. Follow him on TikTok. Good follow. Nigga's hilarious. <laughs> He's very funny. I do yes. not have a TikTok, but uh, I see the clips that make it over to the bird yeah. app. Yes. And he's funny. I like he's him. Tell, he, that's, my, that's my type of sense of humor. Like one yeah. of my favorite genres of sense of humor. Um, does, do any of you or either of you, should I say, do you remember your first experience with the film? Did you remember? Do, you, do anyone see it in theaters? Do you remember where you first saw it? Um... It's an 85, 85 classic. I don't remember going to see it. Got you. Yeah. I do remember going to see Brown Sugar <laughs> getting in dropped the off in the theater. Um, okay. Rich, you went to college in Toledo, but you may not know. You might have been gone or it might have been gone by the time you got there. It used to be a movie theater on Secor. Yeah, the one, the white one? Yep. Right by the highway? Yep. Yeah, so I don't, I like well, actually, I think that theater was open when I went on my visit to okay. Toledo. Mm-hmm. Like on okay. my college tour, 
It was open by the time I got to campus, I think freshman it year, gone. it was closed. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Yeah, so that was that used to be the spot. All the black people, you either went to Franklin Park or you went to movies on C4 to see black movies. And that's where we got dropped off to. <laughs> mm. Shout out to them getting dropped off days. Shout out yes. to getting dropped off. <laughs> School would understand here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. If I were to get dropped off, it would have been to the uh, Northgate Theater, the old one, the old Northgate Theater, man, where we used to go to the mall just to walk around first, yep. and kill some time. Yep. Um, yep. Get hassled by security and then go straight over there. Yeah. Um, or we used to go to the Springdale show or the Cincinnati show. And it was separate. It was separate from the mall. Yeah, it was separate from the yeah. mall. So yeah. that's the old show. You had to actually walk across. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, once I started driving, we always went to Springdale. Man, those are just days, man. I, the movies ain't what they used to be, but if y'all too young to experience that, man, it used to be the spot. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I remember, I remember they banned the white tees from up there. The black tees, white tees. I remember seeing Bad Boys too when they had security. They had like actual police officers checking IDs to make sure you were of age, yep. that you was with somebody. We can go on for days about it, but yeah. I don't remember seeing it in the theaters. I don't think I did. Um but this is one of those films where I went through a stretch, let's say like a five year run of watching it so much. Okay. And I watch it still on a consistent basis, but I watch mm -hmm. this film a lot to yeah. the point where it all got jumbled in. I don't know when I saw this for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's just an automatic feel good. Anytime I see it, I love this film. I, I really do. Um, we'll get into some stats on it. It was released October 11, 2002. Um, it's nuts to think that this movie will be 21 years old in October. Crazy. Insane. Um, and it had a four-month run at the theaters, mm -hmm. which is wild. They don't do like, it like that anymore. Uh, no. Third of the year, this film was in the theater. Wow. Yeah. Um, directed by Rick Famuia, which we just talked right. about him for Our Family Wedding. Mm -hmm. I said earlier he did direct the... Um, or excuse me, I said a couple weeks ago, he directed the best coming of age film of all time, which is The Wood. Wood. I can't wait to get into that. Now, that is a grail. That is one, <laughs> like I said, we're going to get to it. one day. Um, and he wrote the screenplay for this. Michael Elliott wrote the story. And Michael Elliott also wrote Just Right. Mm. Those seeds for that were planted on this film when he worked mm. with Queen Latifah and said she could, she could carry a rom-com. Yeah. So he actually wrote Just Right for her. And did. So funny yeah. how things come full circle. Had a budget of $8 million and worldwide gross of $28.3 million. So it definitely made its bread. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as far as awards, it won a 2003 Black Reel Award for the best song, Love of My Life, performed by Erica Badu and Common. Still a classic. Still. Right. Queen Latifah won the 2003 BET Award for Best Actress. Now, she had three films. I don't know if it was, I don't think it was solely for this film, uh, but she had Chicago, she had Brown Sugar, and Bring It Down the House. Um, in 2003. So she did win an award and it had 18 total nominations throughout different mm -hmm. awards. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the cast. Let's talk about it. Get into it. About it. Tay Diggs is Andre Romulus Ellis. When we first did our Best Man episode, the original Best Man back in 2021, we talked about Lorenz Tate was mm -hmm. offered the role of Harper and he yeah. turned it down. Um, I'm not sure if anybody knew or we talked about this as well, but he also had this role. Yeah. Chris Tate was offered the role of Dre and he turned it down as well. And you know what's funny? I know we mentioned something about it last week um, about how we're going to be working on our top 50 black actors list. Does it strike you that Tate Diggs, like I think Tate Diggs did better in both of these roles than what Lorenz Tate would have done? Um, well, first, no, because... Is that statement true? Do you think, do you guys agree that he, Tay Diggs probably played these roles better than what Lorenz would have carried him? Um, I, I agree on the best man. I disagree on this one. Okay. Um, my reasoning being Tay, Tay doesn't carry that hip hop all that well. Like he just doesn't to me personally, he just like I'm not asking Tay Diggs what's his best hip hop album if we ever because mm -hmm. he just doesn't seem he listened to jazz like <laughs> he has that hip hop feel where like I believe him that he wants to start his own record label like I don't know I hmm. actually agree with you school yeah um okay I actually agree with you 
Best man, yes. And I like Tay Diggs in Brown Sugar. Yes. Um, but yeah, to absolutely. your point, there were a couple of lines. Mm-hmm. And it was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, didn't, curling. it didn't feel authentic to yeah. him. Um, where from, because we obviously don't know Lorenz Tate, but mm-hmm. from what we know of him or what we've seen, I think that that he's swaggier than mm-hmm. Tay Diggs. So I think that the swag to to be a New York born and raised early 2000s hip hop yeah. mogul mm-hmm. record exec mogul quote unquote record executive mm-hmm. I think that Tay could or uh, Lorenz could do that. Mm-hmm. Lorenz could do that. Okay, man, I like that. I like that. I I just struggle thinking uh, when I think about the um the dinner scene with Dre, you know, walking in on Reese at the at the restaurant. Uh-huh. It's hard for me to see Lorenz in that situation. I made the same point in our best man episode. Like there are certain situations that happen in these films that are hard, but I think Lorenz is good enough of an actor to where he can carry it out and it won't be. Yeah. But I agree right. with both of you as far as like the hip. He doesn't strike me as the hip hop guy. Like he yeah. would surprise me if he hopped in the conversation about like, you know, give me Biggie's best, you know, top five lyrics. Like yeah. if he hopped in and gave a valid opinion. I'd be like, oh shit, you listen to this? Like, yeah, straight up. Yeah, that would be like expecting me to do it because I'm not a rap girl. I like the rap that I like. Right. But I'm an R and B head. I don't I don't know these niggas. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Those no, no. niggas I don't know. No. <laughs> Everybody else head. you do. Exactly. Um, exactly just real quick, would, if you had to make a list right now, you ranking Tay or Lorenz higher? Ooh. I might go Tay. I might go Tay. I hear you. You might go Tay. I might go Tay too, only because hmm, no, I'm gonna go Lorenz. I I think Inkwell is one of my favorite movies in the world. So (laughs) I think I'd I'd have to go Lorenz as well. But when we actually sit down and do it, um, when I actually think about it, I I would not be surprised if it was Tay. Yeah, it's not an easy choice. But Mm -hmm. right now, I think that Lorenz would probably edge like he would have it. Um, so now Lathan is Sydney Shaw. Um, you got can I just say this real quick? Mm-hmm. That that girl that played young Sana, young, young Sydney. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she, she looked spot on. Yep. I always thought that, yeah, she looked spot on. Yeah. Um, great casting in that. You had Yasin Bay at the time, he was known as Most Deaf. Most um, Deaf, he plays Chris Cav, Anton Vashon, Nicole Ari Parker as Reese Marie Wiggum Ellis, Boris Kojo was Kelby Dawson. Idris Elba auditioned for this role. Yeah. What y'all think about that? I can see Idris. Yeah. I don't think the role itself would... I don't think the movie shifts with either actor. Yeah. Facing the other. You know what I mean? The role wasn't big enough. Um, Queen Latifah as Francine and Wendell Pierce as Simon. School. Brown Sugar. Classic or nah? Oh, man. Damn, why you gotta ask me first? Shit. Um, I'm gonna say yeah. I'm surprised that you hesitating. I thought that was easy. Yeah. What made you hesitate? J- just that that Tay Diggs uh situation I was talking about a little bit earlier. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Just okay. That. Ray P, what about you? Oh, uh, I absolutely think it's a classic. It's probably I'm slapping anybody that says it's not. So good answer, yeah. school. <laughs> um, I told y'all earlier it might be one. It's it's up there with my favorite rom coms of all time. Um, the importance of friendship, the finding your soulmate, recognizing it, stumbling through that. Um, a common, just regular. This is this this movie is for um, hip hop itself. School, we you briefly mentioned like you forgot how hip hop this film was mm-hmm. as far as all the guest appearances and just this is for especially our generation. Like I was 14, yeah. I was a high school freshman when this came yeah. out. Like this is this is or I guess I would have been a sophomore, oh two, oh three. But this is for I feel like the kids I was watching making a band. 
You yeah. know what I mean? And that was watching yeah. Cedar's World and 106 and all that. Like this was our rom com. Can I um, ask so this? It really holds a spot in that. What'd you say? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Would you say this is a hip hop version of Love and Basketball? No. Nah, nah. That's a it's a different um it's different. It's it's a it's a hip hop version of your classic New York rom com. Um, and that's what makes it cool. I mean, they get their classic Central Park shot when they get the hot dogs. You know what I mean? There's just stuff that you see in these, you know, your You Got Males, your Harry Met Sally's. Well, um, I say that because they both were just in love with hip hop. Like hip hop was their. Was well, basketball was the, the driving force behind Love and Basketball. I know hip hop's the driving force behind this movie, right? Like they're both of their love for hip hop. Both of their love for basketball and loving basketball. Like essentially, basketball was the the main I, character. I, I can see the comparison as far as like both known each other since they was kids, grew up together. I, I still find it a little bit. I can see the comparison. Okay, yeah. I can see the comparison. It's not far off. I disagree, but but I see how you got there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it. They have different. They definitely have different um um different themes. I think you know mm-hmm. different tones. Should I say? Yeah, um, the two films do maybe because of the way they're told and the way they're presented, also that has a lot to do with it. But, um, I can definitely see the similarities as far as I think, I, and, and also it's weird that she narr- narrates and you like that because that's not your thing, too. Because it, you gotta, so you know, I love writing in general, and the narration is her narrating her book throughout the movie, so it's different, true, you know, different parts of her book, so it's not like a this is what's on my mind, even though it is, it's done in a creative way, in my opinion. Got you. What you was about to say, Ray? I was just like, so it doesn't sound like Moesha's diary to you. Yeah, because that's what it <laughs> sounds like to me. That's what it made me think of <laughs> on some real shit. Like, I'm like, I don't think it's done enough for me. I don't think it's done okay. enough throughout the movie for okay. it to really... For it to you know, bother you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it is. And, and the fact that it's about hip-hop and we obviously know what that represents. Yeah. Um, damn, man. Y'all really got me thinking about it now. But no, it doesn't bother me because it doesn't happen enough. Okay. I can kind of appreciate it, which is very unlike me. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said it. Like, yeah. <laughs> very unlike me. Um, but like I said, the foundation of friendship, the scenes where like they're just each other's sanctuary, they can tell each other anything. Um, I know we're going to talk about just the... <sighs> I don't I guess we can ask whether or not I think I know the answer, but whether or not that their relationship was inappropriate in relation to their spouses or the people they were dating. Like that's a that's a funny little thing. It is. It, I'll man, I'll say, yeah. And, and especially for Reese, it's hard because you think you know somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you love somebody because you think you know this person. And then, like the best her the best friend, like she knows him to another level, and you want to get there. You want to, so it's just jealousy on her part, I would say, right? Yeah, it justifiably so. But absolutely, I hell yeah, like I would feel um, the same way. Like if my wife had a friend, a male friend, and he was on another level than me, like naturally, I'm jealous. So. Uh. Relatable content. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's one of those. Like, can you? I think uh, this is. Go ahead, I've right. been the inappropriate friend, mm-hmm. and it's not mm-hmm. me as well. With intention to be inappropriate to you and your relationship, but the reality is, is that I know more about this nigga than you do, <laughs> um, and I don't think Sid was trying to. So. I guess we into it now. Um, the bridal shower I do have as one of my favorite scenes because you can be like, oh yeah, this is my homegirl who I grew up with, best friend. But are y'all really best friends? Because I have tons of male friends. I mean, I have three brothers, so I have a lot of male friends that I'm close to, i.e. y'all. But um Sid knew everything about Dre. Mm -hmm. Things that in depth we see then that one, 
Reese didn't know it was like that. Mm -hmm. and her mom's like, okay, this is his friend who grew up, his childhood friend. Okay. Yes. You know, not that she knows this nigga's resting heart rate. <laughs> yeah, and it is uncomfortable and it is awkward and it becomes inappropriate and if you respect your partner you have to find a way to maintain your relationship but put some space in between that so y'all can figure out what y'all doing interesting I think that um, for one marry your soulmate from jump <laughs> I think that avoids a lot of it because we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get into that as we talk about scenes and just their relationship and mm -hmm. things we find out as far as uh, when they might have first made that move or had that conversation um, throughout mm -hmm. the relationship. But um, I'll ask this to both of you. How, how would you feel if you are dating someone and then you get introduced to the opposite sex best friend? Like, like exactly. I said, I've been that, so I would just have to see. No, I'm talking about the flip. Now flip that, right? Like I'm talking. No, I'm talking about you are, you the girl. You. The I girl. know. I got to see. <laughs> I got to figure out. I have to figure out what their dynamic is first before I can decide if I'm going to be put off by this relationship or not. I agree. I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah, it it I... just depends. Is she extra? Are you extra? Are you somebody who I don't quite recognize, even though I know that there's a different comfort level there because of the nature of the relationship that you have? But mm, does this make me uncomfortable? Do y'all be on weird shit that's low-key? I'm picking up on some things, or is this just some goofy-ass niggas that's sitting right here? Like, right. I would just have to really... Figure out y'all's energy first before I can decide if I'm put off by it. Yeah, man. It's, like I said, it's a funny little thing, man. It's a funny little thing. What they what Beauty and the Beast say a tale as old as time. <laughs> yep. I'm just saying that that always seems to cause a stir. Yeah. How good weird. of a friend is this person? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um I ain't gonna tell too much. But I don't think they going back to something you just said earlier. I don't think they could help it. Like I think that they were yeah. they That's were soulmates. It. Like they were just it was such a they were uh, a rare level of comfort that they had with one another. Like it was just natural. Like it uh, they they I'm sure they didn't even notice that they were doing it. I mean it was obvious to everybody else. And there's exactly been, that. Exactly yeah. that. Um yeah. And I've seen like, situations like that where you do, you know. You're not aware of it, and everybody else is like, "Yo, like same, yeah." <laughs> very, same, same, very same. interesting. So I know we talked about um, best scenes. We were talking about the bridal party. Mm -hmm. um, Ray, why don't you go with some of yours? Okay, so I started there, um, and these are kind of all over the place because I really started writing them down before I even began doing rewatches, just because. There's so many. Of I already them. know that this is my favorite scene in the movie, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Reese and Sid boxing in the gym just because yep. you really see how, again, rightfully so, Reese is frustrated with the nature of the relationship that Sid and Dre have. Um, The wedding, because, Francine, why is you so loud in here? Uh, Dre really was looking at her and he really was anxious. I think a little piece of him was hoping that maybe somebody might have stopped the shit, but yeah. it was so chaotic. Um, can, can I jump in real quick and say something? Uh -huh. Yeah. When I was younger, and I know I've said this on previous episodes, it, it is strike, it, it's like alarming to me. Not alarming, I'm, that's a little bit dramatic, but um, I'm amazed at how many times the men in these films are waiting on the women to come and do something about these relationships. Ain't I don't think enough? that's something I ever noticed when I was younger. That's <laughs> it was just wild. Every time I go back, we we're watching this and we're watching, um, uh, we just talked about it. Another way. We just talked that's about it in our family problem. wedding when she comes to the crib and we, um, what movie did we just do? I can't remember. Either way, there was another one where we talked about the same exact thing, 
and uh, loving basketball. Excuse That's me. That's what I just said. Loving basketball. I couldn't hear you. My bad. Yeah, I couldn't loving, hear you. Loving basketball. That's what well, I was. Yeah, it just, it just, it's just crazy to watch as I get older. Um, but go Seems ahead, like Ray. Real life to me. Yeah, that's why that's why I was saying um <laughs> this movie reminds me a lot of love and basketball, like uh Sanai Lathan, like being in love with this man from the first moment she saw him. Like she loved him. She said it yeah. later on, like and she was chasing him the whole movie, I feel like. I mean, I don't know. I don't uh, say, that might be a little too much, but so it was here's quite where, obvious. I about to say, so here's where I would be different. I know what I said in Love and Basketball where I didn't really feel like um, Q was into Monica like or viewed her as more than a friend. I definitely knew that Dre loved her as well, yeah. um, especially when we find out the information when it's her and Francine at the apartment, uh, which I have down as one of my favorite scenes as well. Just to see that dynamic, just see how close like Francine and Sydney are. Mm-hmm. And we get the piece of information that kind of fills in some of the blanks as far as um, – Francie asking her, did you, you and Dre ever talk about doing anything more? He's like, yes. When I was at Columbia, he asked, you know, we ever be, should be more than friends. And I said, no. And I'm very curious to know why Sydney said no at that time. Um, maybe because she didn't want to mess up the friendship, which I can, I can understand that. Like, you don't want to make things awkward, something that rare, like, you know, like I said, they're soulmates, even if it is just a friend, there are friends who are soulmates as well. So that piece of information alone just let me know, like, all right, Dre's been on her just as much. Like, I'm really surprised, like I said, that he didn't um, jump on the opportunity before the bachelor party. But, you know, it is what it well, is. Well, she stopped it. He, If she didn't pull back after before the bachelor party, they would have had sex then. And he, she could have seen his one minute man status <laughs> <laughs> earlier, I suppose. <laughs> Don't do my guy like that. Don't <laughs> do my guy like that. He, he been waiting excited. too long for that, man. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, if she didn't pull back, they would have. They would have done it then. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that just that quick second of her thinking is all it took for them for her to if he would have been half naked, they probably would have had sex. But the the time it would have took him to take his clothes off, she start thinking like mm-hmm. we're too we're too good of friends. That's a good point. Yeah. So. Also, in that scene, the the famous massager, um, I found out that they had to cut a few jokes in there to keep the movie rated PG-13. Mm. They had more massager jokes that they were going to put in, but they actually had to remove a few. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. But Interesting. Interesting. I'm surprised cool. y'all ain't said the one scene that I, I really fucks with, the, the famous. I'm about to say, go ahead. The divorce scene. Hold on. We'll, we'll say that. I think that's everybody's favorite. We'll just say yeah. that one. Okay. okay. Uh, give us another one, school. Um, you already said the gym scene, the wedding. He said, uh, he said yeah, six times. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted somebody to help him. He yeah. said, Yeah, what you mean? When uh she he said, Do you take her to be your awfully wedded wife? And he said, Yeah, 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 yeah. He said <laughs> like, you know what? I don't even know if I ever paid, paid attention to he, that. He said that shit like six times. <laughs> like <laughs> He didn't want to marry that woman, man. He did not want to marry her, bro. At all. That gives me anxiety, y'all. That mm-hmm. really gives me anxiety, like marrying somebody you low-key you don't want to marry, which I know sounds crazy on the forefront. Like, saying it out loud sounds nuts, but people do it every day. Every they day. do it people every day. day. Mm-hmm. But and here's why you should. Because you are the proposer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is the wild if part. If you don't want to, simply don't ask. I mean, that's true. And he jumped into it. Mm-mm-mm. Find out, and we find out that Dre is not the uh, the woman. Bread not, you, you said what? Breadwinner. Well, not even that. Like Dre doesn't. Um, he's he's painted as more of the ladies' man. Like he's never had a girl for more than ten days. I think is one of the lines that was mm-hmm. in this film. So, um, it just goes to show, like, all right, there's something about this woman that he really head over heels. He proposing after a couple months yada 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 it's just because he was on it like he I, he really liked reese mm-hmm. i don't think he was really thinking about sydney um he liked reese till sid got back yeah true 
Yeah, because ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Because she did come from L.A. to New yeah. York at the beginning. Yeah. That's the only way those type of things work. Like you got, if you got a best friend like that, that's like it. that's the opposite sex. Got to way. <laughs> yeah, they got to be in a different city. If y'all in the that's same it. city and you spend time with each other and that chemistry and that natural, especially if you don't have it with who you with, at some point you're gonna be like, man, what are we doing? And that's eventually where they got to. Exactly that. Sid is a safety net for Dre. Um, his safe place, comfort zone. She is who he went to with quitting his job with things that were important to him. She was always the first call. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that hurts. That'd be hurting. For and me. that's hurtful. So let's go ahead and just talk about that scene. Um, because Ray, I just what would your reaction be? What would your reaction be if you find out that your man quit his job and told somebody else before he told you? I would be livid. Why? <laughs> Hove said, I didn't want nobody else to know something that you didn't. <laughs> Why the fuck is you calling somebody else before you call me? And a woman, I don't want to call her a bitch. So a woman at that, your best friend or not, especially as we are in covenant. You know what I'm saying? We're not married. I'm going to be pissed either way. But now, like, I'm your wife. You didn't think that I was the call. Even when he realized that he had uh, Reese's phone, he still didn't be like, oh, shit, well, let me call and tell her. He still made his way to Sydney's house mm -hmm. without saying a word. It had been gone all day. He didn't get home until late at night. Yeah. I would be pissed. Mm -hmm. And you quit your job? And, and the way that she found out, it's not like he openly told her. It slipped up. And it slipped up at the time when she was trying to step up and see what she could do. Obviously, she was upset, but let me see how I can still help. Right. And the one thing I offered, the first thing I offered, you just told me that the woman that you already told is taken care of. So that's like a double slap in the face. Yep. Yep. That shit wild, man. Hey. That shit wild. And you know what? I was just thinking about the scene before when he before the bachelor party. Sydney was the one kissing up on him. I have that. She initiated yeah. taking yeah. it over the line. Definitely initiated it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that she stopped when she definitely started it. Because she came to her senses like, what the fuck? Well, I I don't know because remember what she asked him after that. After they kissed, remember she asked him like, are you still going to go through with it? Like, mm -hmm. I think she thought that that was enough. He obviously he I didn't want to marry her. She yeah. knows well enough to know. She was trying to give him that way out, and it was going to be through uh, through us, which is, is the safety net, as you say. Perfect. I hear what you're saying, but no, I don't think that they would have started again if he would have said no. I think that she was just like, oh, shit. Let me take a pause for the cause. I don't, I don't think that um, if his answer, after they had already stopped kissing, would have been no, that she would have said, okay, let's do it. Let's get busy. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that would have been a good moment. I think they would have did what they had to do. There's a there's a similar moment in the film when the roles are reversed. Yeah. And um Sydney gets proposed to. And Dre says the same thing at the at the party when it happens. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go through with this? You think Sydney's response was more so um a direct response to how Dre handled the situation, or do you think at that moment she because remember she hesitated mm -hmm. like he had to tell her say yes like <laughs> she didn't want it like it was a kind of similar situation like she knew she didn't want to but she went through with it anyway how much do you think that decision dre made um when he didn't stop his marriage um uh, or his wedding from happening should i say it did i think it had a lot to do with her accepting his proposal absolutely um because she said it you know i want my cut off sandwiches too you mm -hmm. know i want that moment i want to wear my dress i want to be married right you've married this stranger <laughs> you did what you was gonna do it's my turn she i i think it absolutely had everything not everything but a lot to do with dre already being married and then this is fucking kelby he's an nba star yeah he's fine as hell he got okay. money why the fuck wouldn't you? He's seen. 
these couple of months you've known him, he seemed like he got some sense. <laughs> he seemed kind of yeah. right, a little selfish, but yeah, they definitely made it an easy choice for yeah. if you if I'm gonna go with somebody that's not you know the love of my life, why wouldn't it be this other multimillionaire? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Who can cook? Who gonna be out the house, out of my hair, out of my way <laughs> several months out the year? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Don't ask. Oh, you got the ball game? Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. Oh, All right, you do. <laughs> um, let's see. School, you got another scene for us? Um, let me see what else I got. Say at the wedding. Um, can I talk about? Can we talk about the the sex scene? Or is, is, is right after they have sex, that's a short that's scene. scene. That's a good scene. The first time they have sex. Um, I mean, can we talk about the way he looked at her, bro? Like that's how you look at somebody you love. Like, which part in particular? Huh? Which part in particular? While they were having sex, like doing a thing. What um, I don't ever remember that scene for uh, not this. I remember the scene. I'm trying to think of that look for some reason. It doesn't come to mind. Like I said, I've seen this movie so many times. A lot of things are warped. Yeah, it's like a little uh some moaning going on. I know what you're talking about. I get the point that you make in school. Mm. He loved her. They loved each yeah. other. Like. That's not surprising once you finally cross the line with the person that you've considered crossing the line with or have secretly held a candle for and for whatever reason, it just never happened. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful until it ends. I think my favorite thing about that scene is the lead up to it. Um, When he's, you know, we saw earlier that Kelby didn't know what she had written in her previous Mm -hmm. article. Yeah. And Dre's quoting her first ever published article. Yeah. Um, and just kind of the look on his face was like, yo, that was a dope line. Like, just yes. you can tell, like, like he, that that line means everything to him. Like, mm-hmm. he, it lives in him. Like, they're just connected like that. Yeah. And just that, you know, just that other reminder, like, this is deeper than just mm-hmm. people that have known each other our whole lives. Like, we are, at times, it feels like we're the only two in the world. Like, we speak the same language. We, you know, we have a, yeah, we have a certain bond all the way down to our love for hip hop, like so. Absolutely, it, it, it's just incredible to see, and I just love those type of scenes. And the, when they, whenever they portray or highlight that friendship bond, yeah, um, that's th- those are kind of the ones I like the most. So I thought that was dope about it. Um, I'm trying to think of what I think you guys covered them all. We talked about the park scene a little bit. I don't know if anybody wanted to say anything else. Just. You know, they're talking about bonding over hip hop, the vulnerability mm-hmm. um, when he actually told her that he was quitting and stuff like that. How quick she was to write a check. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's some real friendship shit. That's it. Absolutely. You like your checkbook when somebody tell you something like that. Facts. Like, that's some real, that's like, real. nah, like, that's, I want to make sure I, like, drive this point home. Like, real <laughs> friendship. Like, not, I know this person, they cool. Like, this is that handful <laughs> of people that you get in your life that you'll do whatever for. Like, Straight up. I, before you leave this room, I want you to be straight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you walk Absolutely. in here disappointed, and before you leave this area, you got to be good. Like, I won't feel right until you write. Like, Absolutely. I love that, man. Absolutely. It's beautiful. And there's um, no one else in the world that would have, like, had that same excitement and joy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because Reese didn't even care about the shit. She just was doing nah. it. That's her wifely duty, and she's trying to make sure that they household straight. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the, the the one of the best scenes too, or one of the best moments is when she says, um, when she's explaining, when Reese is explaining um, to Sydney uh, his little hip hop thing, and yeah. how upset Sydney, his little hip hop thing, mm-hmm. like this means the world to this man. Like, bro, I love it. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Because it meant the world to her too. Absolutely. After it was it was a shot at Sid too, you know. Yeah, so for sure. She reacted how I think that we should react. Yeah. <laughs> um, I we haven't said it, but I got the win. We meet Ren and Ten, the hip hop Dalmatians, because they are just so ridiculous. Um, and that's what hip hop at now, though. Uh, well, it was <laughs> it was at that 
then too. <laughs> I was just about to say it, it was it was back then. That's what makes it even more funny. That's what makes yeah. it even interesting. We talk about um cabby, like you know, shiny suit millennium, and now you gully, mm-hmm. you want to clean the cab. Now you want me, you want some real street shit. We're yeah. coming off of shiny shiny suit bad boy, didn't he? That's <laughs> That's the question I really had. Was when is Millennium Wendell, Bad Boy? Was he really supposed to be Bad Boy? Was that supposed to be Diddy? I think I it was know. supposed to be what Diddy represented. That because yeah. if, if you know, I mentioned earlier those times when you just had to be there and what hip hop was in two thousand two, yeah. down to the fashion, mm-hmm. and I think that that was a real conflict as far as yeah. like the real hip hop and the core of it. Mm-hmm. And it going mainstream because that's when hip hop really started to like really go that's on weird. charts. Because remember, just a few years ago, um, you know, you got Hard Knock Life tour and things like that. Your first major hip hop tours, yeah, was just starting to go on where they're not, you know, they're headlined by themselves. I know people, other groups and acts have done it, but it started to become a real big deal. So, um, it there was a, there was a side of things that represented that puff and yeah, a side mm-hmm. that represented like that Rough Riders Street Gully. You got a roots corner. You got yeah. all types of stuff. The conscious rap, like it was an interesting time. I was gonna say it makes me think of that that Hove line what he said uh, lyrically. I be Talib Kweli. Oh yeah, skill so truth be told. There you I'll go. Probably Man. be lyrically Talib Kweli. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that was that's how it was. And this is a couple mm-hmm. years so 02. Yeah, this is a couple years before like college dropout. Because mm-hmm. you remember when. When when Ye came out, he kind of made the backpack thing cool. Cool, yep, for sure. Like I said, this this is for us not being at the early stages of hip hop, but also we're in a generation to see hip hop grow old. Yeah, like they were like the generation above us. Like like they like the older cousins, you know, right. our favorite right. rappers and stuff. This yeah. this movie means a lot because of that era. Like I don't know, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's it. it. I agree. Uh, then I'll go to Dre calling Sid at home while she's on her date when Kobe is there after the oh, first date don't. because he was such a hater. Hater. Like, <laughs> Big hater. Big that hater. nigga ain't cook for you. Hey, you mm-hmm. ain't asked yet, but Kelby stepped. Hey, that nigga, <laughs> hey, he was hating hard when he was talking about he ain't cook. He ain't cook. Just, <laughs> did you see him cook it? Like, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Kelby stepped. He stepped a sit between the hundreds of roses and then coming through on the date, cooking, written out, the, even if he didn't cook. Shut well, down the restaurant. <laughs> Walking on the promenade. I'm not yeah. a coffee girl, so I never really understood coffee at night. Um, For your nightcap, like, I'm sure there's something else you could drink. Like, I could just make the drink. But, uh... <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite scenes because we see again, um, Dre acting upon his jealousy, uh, and we see Reese in the background like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Right. What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. You, t- you talk about you talk about Kelby stepping, man. What Chris Brown say? When a rich nigga wants you, <laughs> <laughs> this nigga ain't got no job. Yeah, man. What you gonna do to that, NBA man? Star Kelby pressing up against the love of your life, and you what gotta do it. What you gonna do? <laughs> That's some real love, man. She really loved that nigga. Oh, she did. That's she it. <clears throat> That's it. She That's just the only thing it. that can save you. True love. True love. Um, did anybody have any other scenes before we talk about the restaurant scene? Um, I think the I think the ending scene goes without saying, right? Yeah, the inner scene goes without saying. That's I, that, the inner scene. I think is why it's one of my favorite rom coms. I think it's one of the best like romantic um, climaxes that you can have. Yeah, and it's funny because they were talking about it. You know, the director was speaking about that. It's an interesting thing where they've already had sex in the movie. By the time you get to the end, you know, they've already had that kiss. You know, you, yeah. you already know how they feel about each other. So, how do you end that in a non traditional form? And I just think the with the go Angie Martinez. Yep. At the radio station, um, a call back to what he said earlier. You know, if it was me, I'd have wrote the piece of paper, yes, no, maybe, um, to their friendship and everything. And them just both finally breaking down and realizing, like, yo, like, let's quit playing. Yes, let's, let's please quit playing. Like, her crypto well, is just who she's dedicating it to. 
all of that, man. I think it, I think it's incredible how they wrapped it up and just ended the film. Shout out to um, Queen Latifah's character, Francine. Francine, shout out to Francine for because we've all been that friend, like that. No, even if it it wasn't like them to be together forever, but yeah. we've all been that friend. Like, bro, come on, bro, just go ahead, do that. Like, mm-hmm. you like her, tell her. Like, yeah. come on, she was sick of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was at the wedding, ready to set it off. No pun. Yeah, no she was. Fun. <laughs> they was pissing me off at that wedding. I'm not gonna hold you. They had me hot. You hear me? Yeah, I'd have been mad as hell. Oh. <laughs> um, mad as hell. Um, before we get into the final scene, just real quick, could you imagine having your phone switched out with your significant other? Um, my phone would be fine. Listen, my phone would be fine too. But I'll be mad than a motherfucker on what's coming mm-hmm. through. <laughs> Other phone. Like, you see how this guy you see how they that led into what we're about to talk about. Like that's how you found out about the restaurant. Like uh-huh. I couldn't even imagine. Like that would just be some like see some shit you ain't especially when you ain't looking for it. Like I'm seeing this by chance. That's it's not like I'm snooping, like I accidentally okay. grabbed your phone. Um, and that was a real thing. That's well, I guess it could be a real thing now. No, but, no, no. That was it's funny because I was gonna bring this up. That was a real thing because I remember like when cell phones finally be start becoming a big thing and my mom and her um, ex-husband had one. They had the same exact phone and that would happen every blue moon. Like it, because you're not it's not like we have our phones now on us 24 mm-hmm. seven. Like mm-hmm. she had a pager. She like one that deep. She would forget the phone sometimes and sometimes they would grab each other's like nobody was calling. So I you're absolutely right. Was it no texting. But I also have that in a thing that bothers me only because of the time it took for them to realize that you had this other person's phone. And I'm like, I'm trying to rationalize. Okay. Oh, two. I had my first Kyocera. Okay. But nigga, all day has gone by before you quit this job. And you're just realizing that this ain't your phone. Like, you didn't have to make any other call throughout the day. I don't know. That bothers me. And I recognize and I remember not having a passcode on my phone back then because it wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm. But damn, it's been all day. <laughs> very fair point. Very fair point. But um, I think the best scene in this film is the restaurant. When he find, sees that message, absolutely shows up to the restaurant with Sydney and um crashes the date singing love songs and shit y'all sound nice richard lawson richard lawson you sound go ahead girl sound educated <laughs> um who wants to take this over go ahead ray take what over the scene you want to you just want to break down the scene with some of your favorite parts of it or oh i mean the whole thing them rolling up uh they were very cozy in that booth <laughs> Like was to the point <laughs> I felt um Dre when he was like, I mean, you know, how could you know because she's not wearing the fifteen thousand dollar ring Reese. I bought it or that I'm still paying for. Um Reese had been in that gym and here's the thing. Sid had told Dre yep. that Reese be in that gym acting up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she told she let her know or let him know. He didn't want to hear that shit. So then I feel like, yeah, he was salty and yeah, he was hurt. But also that ego was even more so brief because Sia told your ass and you ain't want to listen. You felt like she was being a hater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I got to show out even more a little bit, Loki, because <laughs> my ego is messed up. And and she, uh, Reese, Reese was... <laughs> Reese clowned him though when he she he said that fifteen thousand dollar ring that well, she I'm famous on. Like, hey, could you not put my business out in the streets? Hey, that shit get me weak every time. Mm-hmm. Um, um, when uh, Sydney's pulling him, talking about some uh, come on, you are making a scene? He said, I want to make a scene. Like, that's what I'm here for. That's it. Um, I, I want to say as a married man, I'm never fucking going. That's all. Well, they got divorced, so they didn't go. <laughs> um, Reese was disrespectful as fuck. Not just for being out on a date because you know that your husband is in love with somebody else. 
Why you wear that man's favorite dress she on was that date with that stranger? Because <laughs> she know what that dress do. She know what it was. You don't have no other dress that do that same thing. She probably do. She making a point. Well, she's she a lawyer. Care. She ain't got dresses. Mm -hmm. yeah, she making she a point. She got dresses. And Nicole Ari Parker got body. She's so, making a point. Ah, yeah. you wanted you wanted him to know. You wanted him to find. Wanted, she wanted to walk in the door in her dress. And and Dre go, damn girl, where you been all day? Mm -hmm. With a lie. Yep. <laughs> out here breaking vows. So look. Ugh. So when she so when she asked him where you been all day, and he'd be like, "Well, I was over there with Sydney," and uh, <laughs> she was so justified. Yep. So she could feel justified. That's mm. crazy. Mm. I mean, for me, everything you guys have said, but Tay Diggs in this scene, like just his, I think the most the average person would react a lot differently. As far as like, if I see this, like I'm not. What's up? Surprise! Hey, like I I enjoy that because that's the opposite of what I would do. Yeah, like I like seeing stuff that I wouldn't normally do because what I'd probably be like, huh? What would you do? What you mean? What would I do? What are you talking about? What do you think I do? I don't know. Everybody, I want to know what you think you would do. I want to know what you think you would do because the reality is, is that you don't know what the fuck you would do. I'm not going. I already said what I'm doing. What I'm you gonna do though? You gonna whoop her ass? You gonna nah, beat his what? ass? You gonna snatch her up? What are you gonna do? I ain't I ain't whooping nobody yet. Well, I ain't gonna say nobody's, <laughs> not hers. He don't but know. He's depending not on how at he fault. played, huh? He not at fault. You right? No, nah, you, you absolutely know that right. Lady Mary. You know, you absolutely right. Um, I don't. I couldn't see myself. You gotta find out shit. You gotta. You gotta find out what's going on. I might sit down, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm, oh, it's going to be dead ass serious. It ain't going to be no jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm what I mean? We're going to have a talk. All, th all three yeah, of us, we're going to yeah, have a talk. Straight up. That's and I, I wouldn't have Sydney with you because like that kind of take away a little bit of your leverage. I, I, like you, that's the reason that I'm even out here. But he was with Sid. Of course, that's the problem. Look, you always with Sid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What she thinking? Like, nigga, you always would see. It. Always this is my point. This is why I'm out here with your favorite dress. You know yep. what I mean? And like they, um, do you know, at the pool hall scene, not to jump, thing. but <laughs> at the pool hall scene where they're, you know, talking about pretty much ending their marriage, mm -hmm. they left it up in the air. They never directly said it, but you kind of got the idea. She said, you know. You, they, you know, the therapist asked or the attorney asked, have we tried to make it work? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we made vows, and then Dre says, You broke those vows, and then she mm -hmm. immediately says, Well, I know you and Sydney had your special thing because at that point they had both done dirt, yeah. yeah. So, but she didn't know they fucked, she didn't know, but she knew, she knew, I think that's what she was alluding to. Like, she left it out there, it was like a gray area, but she, I think that was her way of saying, like, Come on now. Like I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know, but it's not gonna mm -hmm. shock me if you tell me some shit went down. But just everything about that, like I said, going back to the restaurant scene, just his reaction was hilarious. It because was very funny. I don't know if I would have handled it like that. Sydney's embarrassment, mm -hmm. uh, which that's top tier secondhand embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, uh, especially at this place. Uh, Richard Lawson, like you said, Ray, he really is the innocent bystander. I ain't got nothing to do. I didn't know you was married, my man. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. Of course, I'm going to be out here with it. Like you said, they were singing love songs to each other. Yeah. Bruh, I could imagine. Bro, that's, damn it. That's why I said, like, I could. I don't think I would be on. Hey. <laughs> I'm not going. And I am. Sorry, Ray, I'm not going. Oh. <laughs> but you ain't said what you would do, what you think you would do, though. I'm not going. Um, I would sit there. Like I said, no, I said I'd sit down, but it would it'd be dead serious. It wouldn't be no joking. It'd be we really be having a talk. Like, what's yeah, up? we gotta figure out what's up, what's going yeah. on. Cause it, it would hit me, Ray. It would hit me like, hey, brother, I this ain't even yeah, unless you do know. Like the, the whatever information I get, you might have known. Then we can take it somewhere else. Yeah, no though. I don't know. Yeah, but either way, man, I just, <laughs> just just the idea of it the popping up. <laughs> Uh, Dre just being uh, just on one, like sit down, girl. You all stiff, like <laughs> everything about it. Him ordering food, like and yeah. really being salty, he didn't get that food. Yeah, I was That's about to say pork chops. He really Bitch. wanted some pork chops. 
yeah, I've been there before. Like, where you really want to, you, sh- you, you should have ordered something, but then it, and then later on, like, damn, I knew I should have got that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I think I keep saying it just because I am starting to realize, like, I always say I would do X, Y, Z, but you have no idea how you would react in a particular situation. Like, sometimes you just be stuck. Like, what the fuck is such disbelief? Which is what I think ended up happening because Dre and Sid went there to confront Reese and to let her know that she was caught. But I think that once he actually saw Mm -hmm. what was going on, I feel like he just blanked and then started joking like a a knee-jerk reaction because he is a jokey-ass nigga. So now I got jokes like, oh, ha-ha, this is what it is. Even though he probably was really mad as fuck, you know what I'm saying? Embarrassed, nice. hurt, wanted to shut it down, but just that you kicked what? me instead. You know what, Rachel? You're right because I'm super low key anyway. Like I'm very drama free, so I don't think I would do anything to really drive. I, my natural reaction in my head, like when I envision a scene. It's like doing that, but I know myself well enough to know, like, I'm too low-key. Like, I handle a real um, player, for lack of better terms, but just real chill. Like, yo, like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my point across, and I'm going to do it in my way, but I don't think I'll be on some, like, girl, what the fuck you doing out here with this nigga? Right. You just don't know. (laughs) You just don't know. You be in instances, situations where you might black out. I don't know what like, I want to block on my motherfucking phone tomorrow, Yvette. <laughs> hey, hey, man, there's different ways to handle situations, man. <sighs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. best quotes. School, what you got? Anything? Let's see. Nope. I really didn't write down a lot of uh quotes. Even though the movie is extremely quotable, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, I'll go, I got marriage on my menu, that whole everything. And we didn't say it earlier, but the whole is mine. Gotta get Gotta get it. Gotta get it. Gotta get, gotta get, gotta get, <laughs> get that thing. part. Those things. Them in the background. Mine. Mine. <laughs> Trying to get that note right. <laughs> who, hey, who wants to be pitchy? Um, don't get it twisted. I'll tap that as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, in the park, what are you talking about? That yeah. shit is ridiculous. Talking um, about brown sugar, yeah. The whole brown sugar breakdown of what a brown sugar woman partner is. Um, it's like the Grinch who stole hip hop. Uh, Cabby, that whole thing. I didn't say that, but that's one of my favorite scenes too. When Dre quits and he gets in the cab, ironically, or unironically, with, um, with Cabby. And then, of course, you're the perfect verse over a tight beat. Because for all the hip hop heads, that's dope. That's what you want. Yeah, that's. I think that's the most iconic quote of the mm-hmm. film. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I had <laughs> just because it's funny. He didn't mean no, he didn't mean nothing by, it, but it came off funny uh, when he ran after they got married. He ran into Sydney. I think it was on our interview mm-hmm. with Shelby or Kelby. Should I say? Excuse mm-hmm. me. He said, "I didn't even recognize you. Ooh, you look great." <laughs> like amazing. It was a low key, like backhanded, like compliment. Like one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, we talked about it. He was on the phone with her after when she was having her date. Like he running game on you. That nigga ain't cook. <laughs> <laughs> um, you the perfect verse over tight beat. Um, uh, one line that I said still say to this day. That's how rumors get started. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, remember my first beat machine, boy? You <laughs> thought you were D nice. <laughs> I only want to mention that because that I remember that being the first time I knew who D nice was. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then the song, of course, like, my name is D-Nice. My name is D-Nice. <laughs> but obviously, he's a phenomenon now. Yeah. Um, but you better switch to the old crack, because the new crack is killing you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I have for quotes. You know, like I said, very quotable movie, but not like a ton of iconic standalone you're going to use forever quotes. You got your school? He said he didn't have no. Oh, we said him. Oh, okay, my bad. Well, I did. I did, but I screenshot him and... Yeah, they okay, don't. I saw. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, scene stealer. School, you got scene stealer? Yeah, Nicole Ari Parker. Oh, interesting. Yes, I think she did a very good, sneakily good job. Like she yeah, well. 
she she definitely uh portrayed a, a heartbroken woman and a woman that's gonna do what she needs to do to get her point across because Dre got the point. Yeah, yeah. he got the point. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, I, I, I like that choice, Ray P. What you got? Uh, most Yasin be death. He he got a lot of respect <laughs> for this. Sure. I got him. I also wrote down in my like little random tidbits. I really like him as an actor. I That's would really like good. to see more of him. And I don't know if uh obviously this wasn't his first role, but uh Carmen Jones, the hip opera. Shout okay. out to oh. little sus. She loved it. <laughs> she loved that movie. The cards never lie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I see those uh rappers turn actors list, I don't see Yasin on their list yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, he's he's not mentioned as early as enough as he should be because he's really good and in a lot of random movies too. Like yeah, he's sure. been in movies that aren't great, but he's been good in them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. All, all types of stuff. So a uh, shout out to him. He's also my scene stupid. Okay. I got him down for that also. Um let's see. Things that bother you. I already said mine. One, uh, why didn't Sid tell Francine before the wedding? I thought that irritated me because if some shit like that happened to me, if I almost had sex with my fucking homeboy the day before his wedding, I'm calling my best friend as soon as he leaves. Like, mm-hmm. why you wait till her that night? So mm-hmm. having that whole, and I know it's for the movie, but that whole discussion during the ceremony, like that pissed me off. Because if I'm Reese people, I'm about to come shut y'all up. Because they was loud as hell whispering. Um, and then the <laughs> other one is... I already said it again. Dre and Reese going all damn day, not realizing that they had each other's phones. Two thousand two was a wild time. Wild it's a wild day. time. It's a wild yeah. time. Um, so you got anything to bother you? Uh, it bothers me that Dre married um, <laughs> Reese. They just married her in the first place. Yeah, because the the prime example I have is when he was on that damn phone calling uh <laughs> calling Sydney about mm-hmm. that date, bro. Like obviously you love this woman and you worried and concerned about her. You should <laughs> brother. <laughs> Niggas are haters. That shit is sad, bro. That shit is hilarious, but it's sad. <laughs> I was gonna i I'm with you. That's one that's one of that's mine. That's like the the fact that they resisted it. I know you have to for the film, but the, you guys love each other so much. Mm-hmm. And it's had such a strong connection that it's impossible for me to believe that nobody saw y'all. Somebody in y'all lives would have been told y'all, you yeah. need to get together. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? That would have happened already. So I think that's why there's no parents in this movie. You said why there's no so ain't nobody got no wisdom. Parents. <laughs> like, if, bro, if you would have had a, a mom or a, even a, a dad, like, somebody ass dad. told you, like, bro, yeah. what are you doing? That woman yeah. loves you. Like <laughs> That Felicia Rashad character in Jeff yes. Wright type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. That's a very good point, actually. Good um, point. the only other thing that bothers me is that scene when Sydney shows up to the hotel and has a conversation about the review and that she can't write it, those leather pants. <laughs> that shit looks really pisses me off. Leather pants. First off, I had on some leather leggings the other day, but leather pants was it. In the early 2000s. Everybody had some. It was. <laughs> I definitely, not, not to dog take I know y'all was wearing them tees in Cincinnati. Oh, what? We oh, were, man, I, I was just about to say. It, it's not just, it's not those pants per se. Like, it's, it's I look back at that era, you know, fashion recycles. Our, our, our era will never come back. Like, nobody's ever wearing that dumb shit we were wearing. Like, <laughs> I was wearing 3X tall tees. Yep. That's you know what I mean? Like, it was wild. Like, that era would never come back. And I'm just like, how do we get stuck with this? They still wear them in Cincinnati, ain't they? Come on, man. Chill out. <laughs> There's a nigga in Toledo with your bows on right now. You're 100% right. <laughs> some conies. You know what I mean? Cultural moments, the whole movie. It's a hip-hop movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cultural moments. All the, all the the Shout out to all, like I said, all the legends. Yeah. That were in the film as, as themselves. Yes. Those small interview clips. A lot of people who have paved the way for them. I just want to shout them out. Dana Dane, Slick Rick, uh, Dougie Fresh, especially in the first scene. So yeah. um, shout out to all of them. Shout out to New York. New York. Shout out to New York. Like, cool G rap. Yeah, all of them. 
Yeah, Just man. Any actors from The Wire? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go, Rich. Wendell Pierce. He plays Simon in this movie, the Puff character, the 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 head of the uh, Millennium Records. But he plays Detective Bunk Moreland in The Wire. Thanks. He's a top three cop, probably a top twelve character in The Wire. I say. Yeah. If I ever sat down and made those rankings, but shout out to him, man. Shout out to Bunk Moreland. Um, I'm always get geeked when there's somebody in this category. Um, wouldn't let that happen to me. See, Rachel, I would have had something, but Rachel got me rethinking. You know what? I wouldn't react like that. I know you wouldn't. I'm gonna play it I, cool. I don't but I'm going to be hot. Oh, I'm going to be hot. I can't say I wouldn't let anything happen to me because... I don't have anything either. I've been a friend. <laughs> and I done seen the friend. <laughs> so it actually did happen to me. <laughs> uh, shut the hell up. <laughs> Relatable content. Relatable content. Still a thorn in my side. School, got anything? Nope. Um, trivia, you got anything for us, school? Nope. I got some trivia for us. Uh WWE wrestler China was in the film. She was in the she was at the very beginning in the party at the Russell Simmons okay. party. She randomly was about near set, and I think she, her and Queen Latifah are friends, and she just wanted to be an extra in the film. Random. Super random, but she was there. Okay. Um, that's funny. I I looked up her credits for this, and I couldn't find it, so I didn't know if that was really her. I saw mm-hmm. her and everything, and I looked up the credits for it, and I didn't. So oh I was wow! Like, yeah, she was just randomly in New York and happened to yeah. drop by. Yeah. That's how it all worked out. Um, a lot of six degrees of separation. Um, within this film, you have Nicole Ari Parker and Boris Kojo, who are married in real life. They're in the film together. He also played love interest in the Soul Food television show. That's what they meant. Tay and Sanaa Lathan, they're in the Best Man series, also in The Wood. You have Sanaa and Boris Kojo in Love and Basketball. I'm probably missing more, but a ton of six degrees of separation in this film with the actors. Um, it was one of the first films, if it was the first or the second, if I'm not mistaken, to film post 9 11 in New York City. Mm. Like actually on location. Because remember, this is this came out. End of 2002, but it started filming, I think, October. October 11th was the first day. One oh, month wow. after. So, um, there was no digital editing of Boris Kojo and his basketball scenes. He really dunked that ball, and he really made the jump shot. Um, apparently, he's a really good athlete. He's a really good athlete. Um, the Knicks did not cooperate with the film, so that's why they ended up having uh, Boris Kojo's character play for the Nets. Yeah. Mm. And, and Magic Johnson is an executive producer of this film. And he's the one that sat down. He said, I will sit down with David Stern and make sure we can get the NBA involved. Mm -hmm. And that's how it happened. So no issues with the NBA. That's why they're able able to use the logos. And the bartender at the pool hall scene that we talked about, the one where uh, Dre and Reese are having their conversation about divorce. The bartender is one of the best friends of the director. Mm -hmm. Um, He is also the real life swim. Oh, swim. The real life slim from the wood. Mm Hmm. He has a cameo in the wood as well because those are real people. That whole story. Yeah. That's, that's Rick yeah. uh, Femuia's story. Um, but yeah, that bartender is the real life slim. Interesting. Okay. This film, the average viewer. Hold on. Hold on. Before you get into that, I thought I didn't have my trivia, but I do have something for us trivia. And it goes back to that six degrees of separation you was talking about. Yeah. Nia Lathan. Uh, Nicole Ari Parker, Queen Latifah all have movies with uh, Denzel Washington, Sanai Lathan and Out of Time, Nicole uh, Ari Parker and Remember the Titans Queen Latifah and Bone Collector so hmm. yeah more to it yeah so we got uh, the average viewer rates this film 6.4 out of 10 school too high too low just right that's too low I'm going 7.4 you ran them 7.4. What you got, Ray P? Uh, agreed too low. I was going to say 7.5. I think both of you, I, I think it's too low, and I think both of y'all are too low. I'm going 8. 8. eight. I'm going yeah. 8. Mm-hmm. Definitely, without question. So, That's four. Yeah. Anything else? Any last words about Brown Sugar? Uh, you didn't say, but New York is definitely a character in the in the movie. Yeah, um, I don't think we went into detail. I, I kind of alluded to it when I say, you know, your classic New York rom com, yeah, yes, Central Park things like that. Yeah. But you, you're absolutely right, Rachel. It is a character in this film, um, and it's got a lot of us in there. Our our version of that same New York. Yeah, it it's always dope to see. It's a classic. I love this film. I watch it often. It never gets old. So, so that means- the friendship aspect. What's up? 
So this is the first movie with the new uh, New York skyline in it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a now that's a fact. Now that's a damn. That's dope. I mean, it's not dope per se, but not I get what you're saying. Person. I get what you're saying though. <laughs> right. I mean it like that. I told y'all, man, I got a sick sense of humor, man. But yeah, brown sugar. Never brown gets sugar. old. Never gets old, man. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed this episode. I definitely appreciate y'all having this conversation. Absolutely. Um, I enjoyed it as well. So we'll be back next week with another episode for Romance Month. I think it's my pick. So I don't even know what I'm picking yet, but I guess we'll figure it out. Y'all find out next week. In the meantime, two episodes that we got y'all next week. Harlem, your honor. Uh, We got those starting to roll out. and We'll have more things coming along. Other than that, y'all be cool. How y'all be cool? Bye-bye. Good.